Yeah. I'm getting a nod from our director. Let's it go. So, okay. This is how I am. <laughs> how do you make them go away? One thing actually, so I was thinking about this actually in the bath last night. All right, so today we're gonna to talk about kind of a cool way to uh, assemble things without welding, without adhesives, etc. cetera. Uh, internally, we call it captive nut. What does that look like? Yeah, so captive nut's actually a really cool feature that you can put in that will hold a nut from spinning in here. So we can get a little close up on that. So you can put the nut in there. And then if you have like tab and slot in there, you can grab a screw and as it comes through that hole, we don't need any tools to hold that nut on the back side. So this allows us to have less tooling yeah. when we're installing well, something. The idea is to hold the nut still while you put the bolt into it so that you, if you have limited access uh, or you know, just for quicker assembly, it's basically like you have a wrench on it. So one of the critical things to do when designing for captive nut is to make sure that your opening is exactly the size of the nut. Actually, not not exactly. What do we open it up to? About five thou usually? Yeah, or, yeah. Kyle, what, Kyle. what do we open it up to? Uh, about five thou size. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so 10 thou overall, five thou per side. Um, however, that does change as you go into thicker material. Yeah, so thicker material is gonna have more kerf on the outside, and so we're gonna have to open up those tolerances a little bit more to allow that nut to slide through. One thing actually, so I was thinking about this actually in the bath last night, that one thing you can either have, this is where know, I do my best thinking. I didn't know you take baths. Every night, this, this is what makes me successful. Yeah. People should take notes. So if you had like hot glue or even like a piece of tape, you wouldn't actually need to hold that nut in. So if you wanted to make like a box where you are actually not gonna be able to get to the nuts on the, on the back at the very end, and not allow that thing to happen right there. If you did like a little hot glue or epoxy or a piece of tape even across both sides of the nut, what that'll allow you to do later on is that you don't even need to have access to the back of this. You can just apply your outside uh, material and put your screw in it and stuff like that. Or, yeah, it's, as we were talking about that, we thought of something else too, which is... Um, Wait, you guys were talking in the back together? No, <laughs> no, no. I, I actually this invite him morning. every single week, this but he this never comes. This morning over coffee. Uh, if you add five thou tolerance per side, it's just to allow for manufacturing tolerances. One of the things that you can do is add, uh, I don't know what Yeah, we draw it on it. the whiteboard. Yeah. Call, call it ears or yeah, something. Yeah, or like a little dimple. So the examples that we've shown you look like this uh, on the inside, right? So your, your nut goes in here. Look at that, it's a hex nut. That works, but you'll have a little bit of wiggle room and you'll have to put like a dab of glue or something like that to, to hold it in place. What we were thinking about is you could actually add a little tit on there. And then you just shove the nut in there, have it hold, you know, maybe you could press it in or beat it with a hammer. Actually, I actually haven't tried it, but maybe we'll do a follow-up video. So. I guess that's one of the, the mistakes that we wanted to talk about is if you make your tolerance too wide, the nut will spin, uh, especially in really thin material. So like this is what, 40 thou? Um, mm -hmm. In 40 thou material, if you apply too much pressure, you know, especially as you're tightening the bolt, the nut could flex that material because it's not as strong. So you want to be careful about how much torque you're going to apply. Uh, depending on your material thickness. And then as you get thicker, you'll want to allow a little more tolerance just because we do have a minimal amount of taper uh, in thicker materials. You know, yep. sometimes two or three thou top to bottom in something like, uh, what is it, half inch thick? 50-52 yep. uh, aluminum. So Kyle, I think you're doing 10 thou all around on thick stuff or five thou? Yeah, on the thicker stuff, about 10 thou per side. 10 thou per side, okay. So anyway, that seems to work. That's 5 thou usually works on most stuff. As you get thicker, allow a little more clearance. So another thing to take in consideration, when you have thinner materials, they're not gonna necessarily hold themselves perpendicular to the other mating material and stuff. And so you can see here, we can get a little angle to that dangle and stuff. And so when we lock it down, 
it'll kind of true itself up. But if you added a bend in here, that might be able to register it to keep it 90 degrees. Additionally speaking, with kerf on the thicker material, it's gonna also naturally kind of hold it angled to that kerf on your material. So sometimes you might wanna actually true up these registered areas on your design to make sure that it sits perpendicular when you actually tighten that up. Yeah, you may need to allow for a little bit of, of uh, taper and if you hit it with a grinder, hit it with a file or something, knock that down the last, the last little bit, I think you're good to go. Okay, what did we- I got, I got one more thing yeah, to avoid. I was say, what else do we cover? Is okay. We want to avoid bottom and out. Don't, don't bottom out. We don't want to bottom out. Bottom out's never good, yeah, right? So Whether it's a car or anything else, you don't ever want to bottom out. Sometimes you do. So, so one, uh, what, I'm, what I'm talking about bottoming out is, is that if I have a thinner material like this, the thickness of this material here is gonna determine the length of your screw. And so if I take a, a longer screw and I apply it over that, this isn't gonna be able to tighten because it's gonna hit the backside here. Yeah. So leave yourself extra room yeah. uh, to allow for different grades of bolts, which reminds me, or not different grades, but different lengths of bolts, which reminds me, one of our pro tips, order your hardware before you do your design. So just because McMaster says that this is gonna be exactly 376 uh, of an inch uh, you know, in width, it may flex a, a few thou. So order it, use your calipers, figure it out. Also, if you go on McMaster's website and you grab their dimensions and then you're cheap and you try and order them off Amazon, yeah, it could be wildly different. So yeah. order your material, then do your design. Yeah, I mean, it, McMaster's got great plugins and stuff that you can do with Fusion and you know, our, yeah. our app and stuff. I would our... recommend ordering just from McMaster. Yes. But if you're cheap like me, you're probably gonna want the yeah. 500 pack from Alibaba and then it's all gonna be garbage. And then yeah. you're gonna order it from McMaster anyway. I mean, it'll work. It just might not work the yeah. way that you intended it to work, right? Yeah. And then you can always go onto our website and see our tolerances for our material and compare those with the nut when you actually have it with calipers. And then you can get a really good fit and you'd actually be able to do the nipples and stuff that Jim was talking about earlier, right? Can we no more nipple talk. <laughs> you started it right there. Oh yeah, the, you're the nipples. Yes, the nipples. Uh, I the angle to the dangle. Yeah, angle we to just the talked dangle. about the angle to the dangle. We didn't talk about scissoring. Keep up, Sarah. Uh, do, do, is this a scissor part? Yeah, so scissoring. Yeah, so so the cool thing about captive nuts and stuff is that you can combine a lot of different features. So like cabin slots, or like a scissored design like this. Kyle, help. Kyle, yeah, get in here. What am I doing wrong? You can also do countersinking, make a clean design. Oh, the bottom needs to be. So while they're over there fighting that, you can come over here actually and meet. So one thing you could do too, that Kyle didn't do on these, but you could countersink this. So if you have a flat head screw like this, you'd be able to have a nice oh, flush design on the back of this part that is combined with the screw. And so it has a nice clean finished design. Here, so now that they're done getting a scissored result, oh, he just undid it. I know, well, it was, it's because our tolerances are too good. There so you go. anyway, and then how do you put the nut in there? Yeah, I think like you this? have to do it beforehand, don't you? No, you oh. slide it in. Kyle. You have to, I put clearance on the side here so you can actually still slide the nut in there. Here, you do it. Oh, that's actually a clever tip is the extra clearance right there. Yeah, yeah. and I'll add in about the You have to have clearance width clearance. Of the nut. Yeah, so in a scissor type design. I think you gotta come up one more. We should probably do this not live. No, oh, fuck it, we're doing it live. Okay. <laughs> Whatever. Oh it should slide over there. <laughs> uh, sometimes you need like a hammer. And this is a little this is a little tighter than the last one. <laughs> yeah, they're all different. Um Whatever. Anyway, we'll make that look good later. Then you put your nut in there and you're good to go. So uh, if anytime you have multiple pieces that are coming in from the X and Y axis, give it a, a additional clearance in your slot so that you can slide the nut in there and then assemble the whole thing. Did you get it? Huh? We're gonna have to fast forward through this part. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I made it worse. <laughs> oh, it's gone now. That might be that Alibaba.
hardware compared to the McMaster hardware that we were talking about earlier. <laughs> Potentially, yeah. <laughs> we, might have not, we might not have followed our own things to look out for. Yeah, we needed, yeah, who knows where we found those nuts and bolts. Um, okay, finally. Let's talk about, so like, what, what is this an alternative to though, right? So you have yeah, welding. So welding, right? Not everyone has a welder, especially if you're like in an apartment or something. If you're welding in your apartment, that's amazing. Keep it yeah. up. Uh, especially if you're stealing the power from your neighbor. Yeah. But the other thing is disassembly. So if this needs to be transported, you say you have a hundred of them. Uh, like when we go to the SEMA show, we actually made a bunch of stools and chairs and stuff that ended up being flat packed so that we could consolidate our freight because they charge you an incredible amount uh, yeah. to move a freaking pallet at the SEMA show. So uh, disassembly is a huge one. No weld. Yeah, I mean, it's an alternative for PEM hardware. So a lot of this stuff, you could do a 90 degree bend, have a pressed in hardware alternative. Yeah. Um, so this is like a nice seam. This is a really, really clever way to do a 90 degree hardware installation without having like a 90 degree bend in there. Yeah. Um, you know, adhesives, we've, you know, me and you are a big fan of JV Weld, but you know, sometimes, oh, yeah. sometimes people frown upon JV Weld and duct tape. I will say so uh, the 3M panel adhesive, for automotive applications is Absolutely. amazing stuff. Sometimes it's even stronger than welding, depending on uh, the application, like in thin materials, that panel weld is, is incredible. So yeah. there are alternatives that you can use to this. This is just one way. Um, it's not gonna be great for every application, but it'll work on some. So yeah, yeah. And that's all we got. Let's just cut to a montage of Kyle putting this thing together. Yeah, he's gonna build it better than us. Okay. Kyle, it's all you, man. Kyle, build it. Nice work, Kyle. Good Thank job. You. Good job, Kyle. Yeah, this is a really cool design, man. I got a couple of these actually you've made already. I have one in my shop. I use it literally every single day. Yeah. Um, this design has pretty much everything we've talked about. Um, you actually order the casters off of what, Amazon? Yeah. That's actually really cool. So you, you probably got the casters first, measured them and stuff to get that tolerance and stuff built up. What would you do differently next time? <laughs> You won't do it. I don't know. I'm, I'm pretty happy with it, but I mean, any like tips well, you did or a couple tricks. iterations though, right? So like, what yeah. are the things that you actually oh, did learn and then and then iterate moving from there? Um, I did iterations just to get a little bit better clearance on the different hardware, uh, fitment of the pieces together, trying to make it as easy as possible to assemble, um, which is where using the casters as the bolts to hold the bottom of the fixture together yeah. came in. Um, I, you know what I would say is a, a good piece of advice. If you're going to set out to do a large project that could have some cost associated with it, order a couple little samples, test your design, test your tolerances, yeah. um, iterate uh, on something cheap, or even order a bunch of them at a time. You know, our minimum order is 29 bucks, but you could get like all of these for that same amount. So test different tolerance, uh, and then when you're ready, go to the big one, and you're good to go. Yeah, I mean, this design's also got a couple cool things, right? You have tap and slot up here, you have tap and slot down here, right? So this is a flat pack design that you can send to a customer. Um, if they order it, all they have to do is give it a little hardware kit. There's one tool in this entire kit yeah. and they can assemble it, right? So it's a quick and easy assembly. Actually, we just did a little montage for it, right? And then we have this one screw right here that has another cap to nut that kind of holds our top down. Um, I think that this one right here is, is bottomed out, but I think that it's probably because you're gonna have like a piece of wood with some padding or something up here, right? To, yes. Yeah, and so um, overall, it's an amazing design. Like I said, I use mine all the time. I know a lot of guys around the shop have them. Um, it was very clever on how you did this kind of stuff. Yeah. Thank you. Should we look for this in Marketplace? Yeah, yeah I might do that. If yeah. Marketplace isn't <laughs> yeah. live, it's coming, but maybe it is live. We'll put the link in, yeah. in the bottom. Yeah. When it's ready, yeah. <laughs> anyway, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.